Spoilers ahead for Civil War right now on this Curb Blog all about seeing it. So you know not to watch it. Now, before you spoil yourself completely, but anyway, here we go. Uh, holy shit. Wow. Like, Fucking wow. Okay, first of all, it, it, it feels like the Ultron curb lot that I did a while ago, uh, seeing that wasn't even really that long ago, and I was already, like, immediately upon finishing that up, like, hyped for this movie. Uh, but I swear to God, it's like I blinked, and I was like, oh, Civil War's here. It's like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> so, wow, that was a good movie. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, so seriously, we're a minute in. If you've not seen it yet, please don't. I will not be offended if you don't listen to this. See the movie first and then come back for my thoughts because, oh my god. Um, yeah, where do I even fucking begin? Uh, this, this may be possibly my new favorite of all the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Um, it's really incredible how good of a track record now Cap has had uh, three in a row. And again, I, I mentioned in the last one too that I, I know that not everybody's a big fan of the first Avenger uh, film. But for me personally, and and... Especially because they're all so, they're so different. They're, they're all, they're, okay, First Avenger, Winter Soldier, Civil War, all very distinctly different kinds of films. They're all superhero movies, but in terms of, like, their themes, their morals, their, you know, usage of different characters, like, their, their kind of the core of what they are, are all completely distinct from each other. And that's really interesting to me. And, you know, I don't know if, this, if they're necessarily going to be doing you know, because there's there's been no indication as to if any uh, of the individual um, Marvel movie, you know, Marvel character focused movies are going to get uh, anything beyond a third one. Because there's no sign of an Iron Man four or a, a Thor four uh, after Ragnarok happens, I think next year, uh, or uh, or even after this one either. Um, but I'll I'll kind of get into that a little later. Um, so Black Panther and Spider Man were major highlights. Uh, what a what a fucking splash they made! My God. Uh, yeah, they just, it's funny, because actually, I, I was, I made a little offhand joke to uh, Mike when uh, when we were watching it, and the, we have the scene where, um, where Black Panther is, is looking out the, uh, uh, the, the window and everything before the, the press conference starts, and my first joke was like, Spider-Man, because like, not that I'm, not that I'm complaining about Peter Parker being chosen over Miles Morales, but just that would have been funny, but uh, that, that would have been, that would have been cool if, if possible, but uh, yeah, T'Challa was, was such a great character, like, my God, like he, he just in for, for this and also for Peter being, you know, this, this being their introduction to now this continuity, like, you know, cause I think, I don't know. I don't know if there was some like concern about how that was going to work or whatever with, like, oh, you know, too many characters or, or everything. Um, but you know, every character felt so utilized and, and like they all got a fair amount of development. And I think that the reason that that was easier to develop everybody in this scenario is because, uh, a lot of them were all kind of, and like, they were all kind of, uh, you know, enveloped under one of three different umbrellas. Obviously, there was the, you know, hashtag Team Cap and Team Iron Man and all that stuff, but uh, but also kind of the, the second, not that secondary, the uh, uh, tertiary, I should say, party, uh, you know, in that of, of characters like Baron Zemo, um, as, well as, uh, as well as Black Panther in a way. I mean, obviously, he's on, you know, Team Iron Man in the beginning, but really, he's got his own, his, kind of his own agenda. Um, and his, and, and actually ba Black Panther and Zemo's dynamic was really intriguing, especially like towards the end where they have that scene out in the snow and, you know, they're kind of like, wow, you know, we aren't so different, but I'm, I'm going to change that. Cause this is, this is, you know, ridiculous, you know, how I'm going about my, my, my life right now with the choices that I'm making and everything. And, and, you know, I'm, in I'm interested to see where they're going to be going with Zemo, you know, as a villain, because he was, he was a lot more interesting in this than I was expecting. Originally, I thought that he was going to be a lot like, uh, Bone Crusher, or uh, not Bone Crusher, fucking uh, Crossbones in the beginning. Who, you know, he served his purpose. He was a good introduction. Um, but having uh, having Zemo as like this kind of more, like, I think there was some article that said like it was more like the Avengers were fighting against a uh, a concept more so than an actual person. Um, because I think this is this along with the Mandarin, and I think one other character I can't remember. Somebody correct me in the comments. Uh, all radically different from their interpretation. Uh, well, their interpretation in the movies are completely different from how they are uh, in the original comics, which I know understandably might annoy some people, but yeah, Zemo was really, really intriguing in this one.
But yeah, everybody got a great amount of screen time. Uh, Tony and and, uh, and and Steve, obviously, like were at very much at the forefront. If anything, I almost feel like this is... I, I was saying a little bit about this before, but how like I was hoping for you know, more movies focusing on, like, you know, a, a dynamic between characters. This is almost kind of like Captain America 3 and Iron Man 4, because Tony had, like, so much good material, uh, you know, it, it particularly. And, in fact, I feel like sometimes it, it, it almost felt like in certain cases he would have, like, more screen time than, than Steve did even, which is kind of saying something. Um, another high, another another uh, outstanding one, a Vision and Wanda's relationship was really adorable. I know that was kind of a... A smaller scale uh, kind of aspect of the movie, but just the two of them, you know, and then they're kind of, you know, we're both weird. We don't really understand, you know, fully what it is that we can do, and and, and you know, the issues of fear and everything made for some really cool scenes with them. Um, you know, it just everybody had some kind of purpose, and 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 having the different factions more or less, and like the the different moral standing and everything, I think was really cool. It, it's funny because I think um, when I first heard about uh, my friend Noah Scammon. Uh, he was telling me a long time ago about what the concept of Civil War was in the original comic. And I would like to actually read it at some point. Mike Lucas has a copy of it that I, I want to check out at some point. Um, but he said that he, he told me about what the original concept was. And, and obviously, I, I knew once I knew about how it was going to be a lot more of a focus on, you know, Cap trying to protect Bucky and like him, you know, not agreeing with the whole uh, the Accord, uh, the Sokovian Accord, I believe it's called. Um, you know, I, I figured it was it was going to be a departure from that concept. The concept of the Civil War comic is extremely interesting, and I do want to see it for what it is. Um, at first, when I heard that it wasn't going to be about that, I was like, okay, that's a little disappointing, but, you know, we'll certainly see how it goes. But I think that the spirit of, you know, the, the inner conflict between the Avengers and, you know, who's picking what side and, you know, what, what moral they agree with and what they don't, uh, still made for a really, really cool movie in and of itself. I mean, uh, you know, especially because Steve Yurko pointed out it's, it's a five act structure, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, it just everybody everybody got a, at least like one or two cool scenes, uh, you know, and, and just something meaningful happening with uh, with everything. It, it's it was inc it was an incredible experience. Let me let me just say too. Uh, obviously, the actors did a, an amazing job, but. Um, the, the big team cap versus team Iron Man fight scene, like, I swear to God, that should go down in history as like one of the best, like live action or not even just best fight scenes of all time. And like, I know it, you could, you could argue like, oh, it's so overly choreographed or whatever, but just like the way that they create such an engaging, amazing, like action packed fucking fight scene between 12 different characters in the span of, I think that that whole sequence is like, well, maybe like like a half an hour or so, like like in total. I'd have to even go back and see, but it, it's a it's a long sequence, and it's like it it it, it not only is it incredible, but it also it, it I would even say it's it's actually better than uh, some of the fight scenes in the Avengers movies. Uh, not that those aren't great too, but like something about this one, probably just because you know what, it's because it's the characters. It's because it's all of these characters versus each other. You know, really fully utilizing what it is that they can do. You know, as as much as possible. Um, and, and, and the, the thing is, the thing about this big fight scene is that, again, I said, I said this a little bit in the, the Ultron feedback review, but um, the Avengers movies, I feel like in, in those, again, the morals and the main themes of those often, even though they're, they're still there, but they tend to take a little bit of a backseat compared to the, you know, kind of shit, like all the action-y, like crazy over the top, you know, action and fight scenes and everything. And and that's fine. I mean, they're they're still totally entertaining and they're still great stories. Uh, and I and I love seeing all the characters together. Certainly, but but this one, and I think maybe even because like you know Hulk and, and Thor were like not around at the time, um, and we were able to focus on a lot more of like the the less godly characters, except for Vision, obviously. But you know, um, it it, I, it allowed for this particular like issue and and you know the 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 disagreement between everybody in general. That, that, like, the story and, and the moral and the theme of this movie then accentuated the <laughs> crazy action shit, um, you know, culminating ultimately into that big fight scene and then also the stuff that comes after that with, like, you know, uh, Iron Man, Cap, uh, Black Panther, to, to an extent, and Bucky. That big fight was just so fucking intense. Um, that, that, the, the big climax of that, obviously, with, I, I actually thought for a second Tony was going to die. 
and and all of us were surprised that nobody died in this movie. No, no, none of the major like the good guy characters had died. That is one of the uh, Looper videos that I had voiced for uh, for the Continue guys was about like the like the top ten characters we think are probably going to die in uh, in like Marvel Phase Three or Civil War or whatever it was. I'll, I'll probably have like, like an annotation to it or something. But they talked about like all these particular reasons, like both in universe and out of universe, as to why uh, a lot of characters were probably going to die. I think, you know, I think it was specifically for Civil War. And if not, I have a feeling that some of them may very well end up dying in, uh, in, in um, Infinity War Part 1 or Part 2, which now I, th- I believe are being called different movies, according to Mike Lucas. Uh, I don't know if they have, like, the official titles for what they're going to be yet. Um, but, yeah, I, no, but we were so expecting, like, somebody. I, my, I personally thought Steve was going to die and Bucky was going to become the new Captain America after that. Uh, or if not him, then uh, then Sam. Uh, but either way, yeah, I, I'm, I'm still I'm totally okay with the fact that they're not dead because you know that means that more you know stuff for them to do. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was it was what a fucking roller coaster. The the uh, I, I'm sorry, I was saying before the um, the fight with Tony at the end, where I, I genuinely thought for a second Tony was going to die in the in the, the climax of that big battle because he matches the fucking uh, uh, the c- capacitor, the, the the mechanical heart thing that Tony has. Um, that was a big, like, whoa, okay, kind of moment. Uh, other big reaction moments, um, Spider-Man in general, I mean, of course, like, you know, as soon as, you know, Queens, like, after, like, you, you, got, you got a guy? Yeah, I got an idea. And we, we show up at Queens, and suddenly it's like, oh, my God, here he is. Here's Peter. And I, I'm going to talk about more about Tom Holland on uh, Spidey, probably in a, in a future Spider-Man curve blog for next week. But uh, I'll, I'll surmise right now to say that he is single-handedly the best live action Spider-Man I have ever seen. Like I and I I don't mind Toby. I liked Garfield, but my God, Tom Holland blows them out of the fucking water with his performance. It's like this interpretation of Peter live action is like it's it's mwah. I'm I'm so down. I'll talk about homecoming a little bit, but uh yeah, Spider Man in general, huge reaction from everybody and, and just you know the whole the moments with between him and Tony and then like him just being a fucking goof in the fight scene. I think we were oh actually because another moment that got a huge reaction because we, we were laughing and cheering so hard that we you know railed right over uh, uh, Spidey saying, holy shit, in the middle of the fight scene, but Ant-Man becoming Giant-Man. And by the way, I, I think I might have said this before too, but I have like zero attachment to Ant-Man. Like I, I, I like him. I really enjoyed going to, uh, uh, to the Ant-Man individual movie uh, last year. Um, and uh, Scott Lang, certainly a, a lot of fun, but... You know, in terms of, like, history, like, I, I have, like, little to no attachment. And really, you know, that, that could be said for a lot of the Avengers characters before these movies happen. So, you know, same kind of base level, I guess. But um, I, I'd heard murmurings about, oh, maybe Giant Man might happen or whatever. And then just when that shit happened, I was I, I screamed out, like, yeah, or something. Like, everybody was going fucking nuts. It was so cool. Um, so that, and yeah, again, we like, we just like railed right over, holy shit from Spidey. I think I like vaguely heard that mixed in there. It was like the overhead shot of him. Um, another big moment that I, maybe it wouldn't seem like that big of a deal, but I just really struck a chord with me was, um, uh, it's, it's the, you know, sometimes I want to hit you in your perfect teeth. Um, you know, scene where they're in the, uh, they're in the fucking offices or whatever between, um, you know, Tony and, and, and Cap talking to each other about, like, you know, what are we going to do next? This is the whole thing that we have to face now and, and, you know, et cetera. And then when he finds out about Wanda being, you know, held, like, and protected slash captive slash whatever. Um, and Tony going, you know, like, Robert Downey's performance, I'm like, give me a break! I was like, whoa, okay. I was half expecting somebody to drop an F-bomb at some point, although Steve said that they would probably never do that. Probably not. Um, but, yeah, just I felt the intensity of just that, that one line. I was like, whoa, okay, all right. Huh, I'm okay. I'm in for the lawn hall. Like, and then what happened? Like, you know, it's inching forward in my chair or whatever. Um, yeah, this is the level of character development I wanted out of the Avengers movies. Um, again, so far, all three of the cat movies have been so distinctly different from each other. And, and so far they're standing out as the best of, of all of them. I mean, I, and again, that is not to discredit any of the other ones. I have enjoyed basically all of the MCU movies thus far, even the ones that like, aren't all that amazing or whatever, but, uh, but yeah, first Avenger winter soldier and civil war have been just out of this fucking world. And 
it's interesting because I also even kind of think about, uh, you know, S- Steve was, was introducing somebody to a lot of the Marvel movies that, that they hadn't seen before. Uh, and he was showing them specific ones that were necessary to you know, like kind of like the bigger overall plot, and then the other side ones you could just watch kind of on your own leisure, I guess. Um, if you were just doing like a like a straight like Captain America perception run or whatever, it could be like first Avenger, then Avengers, then Winter Soldier, and then Avengers Two, Civil War, and then now what sounds like is going to be the next step, and this is actually a good kind of transition because. Um, the uh, the next week I'm going to be doing is, is going to be Spider-Man focused is um, Spider-Man Homecoming is going to be the next step in this like part of the story because apparently uh, both Captain America and Iron Man are going to be in the, the you know, Spider-Man won the third attempt, uh, you know, as sanctioned by uh, by Marvel themselves. So I'm already sold on, on Tom Holland Spider-Man and, and if it's going to involve, you know, the continuing kind of like combating dynamic of, um, of, you know, Tony and Cap and the fact that at the moment, um, I mean, he kind of has more of a relationship with, with Tony because of, you know, what he's hooked him up with, but also the fact that, like, he and Cap had that moment and that, you know, he admires him a lot. It's going to make for a really interesting uh, and different kind of continuation of, like, this whole sort of semi-inner conflict and, you know, battle of the minds between these, these people that are all generally fighting for the same cause, which is to protect people. And, it, yeah, I... But my God, Civil War, like, just this piece in and of itself, another, another fantastic film. Uh, I now can say fully I, I adore the Captain America trilogy like, like nobody's fucking business. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I am very curious to see where Phase 3 goes. I'm not, you know, exuberantly jumping out of my fucking seat for uh, Doctor Strange. I'll probably go see it. Um, you know, and Guardians of the Galaxy 2, I'm sure it'll be fun. I'm, I'm sure we'll probably have a little bit more of a better set up for whatever the fuck is going on with Thanos by now. Um, but yeah, Black Panther, I'm Black Panther and Spider-Man Homecoming are the two next that I'm like, okay, bring that shit on. I, I, I think I was saying in the, in the, in the theater when we got out, I was like, okay, I want Black Panther tomorrow. And then I want Spider-Man Homecoming the day after that, please. <laughs> but I'm sure I again, I'm sure everything else in between that will be fantastic too. And of course, between that stuff and then eventually, uh, uh Avengers three, um, you know, or however they're going to set up that whole deal, but that's it. That's all I got. Uh, so thanks for listening. Um, in the comments below, uh, what did you all, who have, if you've made it this far, uh, think of Captain America: Civil War? Please leave me your thoughts and theories, and, and you know any anything at all, uh, any anything you want to share in the comments below. Uh, if you have uh, future Kerblot topics, uh, particularly related to Marvel things or otherwise, uh, shoot a uh, shoot a question about that in the comments below, or you can hit me up on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook. I'll be covering a lot of Spider-Man stuff next week, hopefully getting some special guests to join me. Um, So look forward to that, and uh, that'll do it. So good work, soldier.